Oh, yeah. All right, the year is almost over, and I thought it would be fun to do a wrap-up of the top Epic Home Studio setups on this channel for the year of 2020. Woo! So instead of me picking the top ones, I'm going to narrow it down to three categories. We have attached, detached, and minimal home studio setups, and they're all great. I have three contenders in each category, and you are going to pick your favorite out of each three, and let me know down in the comments. Also, make sure to check out andrewmastersmusic.com. If you guys didn't know, you can book me for a mixing drumming, and I have these Zoom call consultations. I've been doing a bunch of these calls with you guys, and it's been super duper fun. I love talking gear and home studios and just bouncing ideas off each other. If you guys have any questions about anything, I'd be happy to talk with you. You can book me super easy at andrewmastersmusic.com. There's also a donate page if you guys want to support the channel. There's a P.O. box. If you want to send me something, go check it out, andrewmastersmusic.com. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And uh, yeah, let's dig into these. Let's see what we got going here. So we'll start with the minimal category. And the first contestant is Marcus Meston. Okay, here we go. So here's the B-roll sequence, right? Here's Marcus at his desk. Here, checking the room, listening to it. Uh, yeah, it looks good. It's just his desk, the Mac Mini, a couple speakers, and his MIDI controller. Super minimal. It looks great, though, because he's doing composing, and he's got a couple sets of speakers. So it looks and feels super nice in there. Uh, yeah, so this is contestant number one, Marcus. Marcus was also one of the first one of the first uh sort of of this series of the studio tours so shout out to marcus marcus meston let us know down in the comments what you think all right contestant number two on the minimal setup is lake house studios here we go all right so he's got a nice comfortable space down in the basement of his house there's a, a little couch area, nice spot to sit. If we look over here at the desk and the situation uh, where he's working, it is, he has two interfaces, the Apollo X8P, great interface. And then he has the Focusrite, I think it's the Octopre. Uh, so he has 16 inputs. And then for his m computer, he is using the uh, MacBook Pro. So he's just using a laptop for the computer. And then he has a MIDI controller on the desk. So a couple interfaces, MIDI controller, MacBook Pro, and then a pair of KRKs. Super simple, very minimal. Uh, and then he's got, uh, what's nice is because he has the 16 inputs, he can actually do more elaborate sessions in his room in his house. So he's got uh, a good set of microphones to track drums, and then he can get creative to do these live sessions, which is what he is is doing with, it. if you guys follow him on Instagram uh, and on his YouTube channel, they do sessions down in the basement. He's got an organ down there, lots of drums. I admire, I admire a man with a lot of drums. And even though it's a small space, he's really creative with how he uses it and arranges the room if they're doing live sessions with a band or something like that so that they can fit everyone and create like a really vibey video to put up on their YouTube channel. Check out Lake House Studio Sessions on uh, YouTube and follow those guys. Let me know what you guys think. Here's the here's the computer setup. It's right next to his drums, which is dope. If you're a drummer, you, you know how this goes. All right, that's contestant number two, Alex McVay, Lake House Studios. All right, contestant number three is my buddy Ryan Scholes. This is out in Los Angeles in an apartment in a bedroom, one of the smaller bedrooms in his apartment. He has a minimal home studio setup. Let's check it out. Quick wrap up on Ryan. Ryan is doing songwriting and he produces, writes, and records the tracks in that room. And then I, I don't know if he has somebody else mix them or how that works, but he does everything right in the spot. And he's done with this apartment studio. He actually has done several tracks for Disney and a bunch of tracks for Red Bull commercials, which is 
So cool. So his setup is a Hackintosh. Uh, you can see down here on the shelf. This is custom computer that he built. He's a computer guy. Really, really smart. Um, and then he's got his Apollo Aero, which is now called the Solo, which is just like a one, I believe a one input interface. And then he has this AKG 214. So he's basically just got a mic, acoustic, a few guitars, the Hackintosh, the Apollo Aero interface, the AKG 214. And I think he might have another mic, a set of KRKs. And that's really it, a MIDI controller, the Keystation 49. And that's all he uses. He uses that. He's writing incredible songs that get placed on Disney and on Red Bull commercials and a few other things that I know he's been working on. He does some pop stuff. And he does it all right in that room. So for the minimal category, we have Ryan Scholes with this apartment studio. We have Lake House Studios with the basement studio where they do the live sessions. And then we have Marcus Messon with the minimal setup film composer. Category two, this is detached home studio setups. All right, so we're gonna start with Carriage Works Studios. This is one of my recent ones that I did in East Nashville. Check it out. Woo! Love those intros. All right, so these guys have a detached building in the backyard and they have, I mean, this is this is an extravagant setup. This is a full, uh, I can't remember if it's 24 or 32 channel console, a uh, bunch of outboard gear, tape machine. They're using this uh, radar computer and I can't remember, I, I think this is a 24 input machine, um, patch bay, so the control room right off the bat, this is not a minimal setup. This is bonkers. Actually, I think all of these are kind of bonkers. Uh, great outboard gear, amazing mic collection. As he goes through here, he just has like all the dream mics. Look at all these RCA mics. He's got Coles. He's got some amazing tube mics. I think he only has tube condensers. That was crazy. And then all the standard sort of dynamic mics. Uh, just wonderful, wonderful collection of microphones there and then he has two booths so we have this booth which is like the singer the singer booth or like acoustic guitar and singing um right by the control room going into the live room and then the live room he's got two pianos a grand piano a tack piano upright and then they have this beautiful vintage drum kit here which is just like my absolute favorite all these old uh, keyboard, vintage keyboards, organs, synthesizers, just toy land, like dream, uh, all the fun things. This is <laughs> crazy. Um, yeah, so all of that, he's got some basses and then a whole wall full of guitars. Just bonkers. If you guys want to see all of this more in detail, that's this video is 48 minutes long. So we go through it all in here. Uh, so yeah, Carriage Work Studios. And then they have the drum booth here. The drum booth is sick. Just uh, super clever too, because the, the entire space was, I think he said 900 something square feet. So it's not even a thousand square feet. So they were really efficient with the amount of space that they had and how they turned it around and, and made this awesome spot. There's also a kitchen and, and a bathroom. <laughs> yeah, super crazy. So, all right. So category, category two, detached studio, carriage works. <laughs> is nuts okay <laughs> next we're gonna do uh studio 601 all right i love this was a good one these guys are down in austin texas okay yeah these guys are down in austin texas this was cool because it was a garage conversion, right? So let's see here. So what's what's cool about this one is it's not like a, a separate... Actually, I guess Carriage Works was also a garage conversion, but there was also like a living space connected to it. This one is was just a garage, and I think it was just a one-stall garage that they converted. So you can see the garage here. 
Uh, and then they just took that one spot, they raised the ceilings, and they made as much, uh, you know, took advantage of as much as they could with that one space. You can see this is where the ceiling used to be. Raised it up, they have some storage up here, a kitchen area, little dining, lounge, little extra lounge here, and you can move this out of the way. And they've got a vocal booth, uh, amazing collection of microphones. These guys also had a sick collection of microphones. Uh, and then we have, they're using an old school cheese grater Mac Pro. Uh, yeah, Mac Mac Tower. I don't know. Did they call them pros back then? I don't think so. Uh, and then these, you know, great speakers. This is, this is like, again, not a minimal category. The, these guys have a lot of awesome stuff. Uh, the SSL board here for summing. They've got some great outboard gear. As you can see here, the, uh, I think they had the HD Orion. So all of the internal patching, all this is connected through that. Yeah, a couple vintage keyboards. And then over in the middle of the room, they have the drum kit here. Yeah, you can see they have this drum kit here and then they can kind of move things around to adjust for different sessions. I know they've done some string sessions in there. Uh, nice handful of guitars. And I've heard some of the records they've done. They're, they're, they sound really, really great. Um, these guys are super cool, really talented guys and really creative with how they turn this one stall garage into this full production tracking mixing studio. And the results they get are great. So this is Studio 601. Contestant number two in the detached category. This is Graybox in Nashville. This was also one of the uh, one of the most viewed tours on the channel, which is really cool. And it's just a crazy build. Okay, here's the little highlight. Yeah, so this is a completely detached building. Brand new construction started from scratch in their backyard. Poured a slab and um, Niles Acoustics and Design designed and built this one for them. And it is, it is beautiful. It is nice to have a brand new, fresh construction project for a detached studio. So these guys went all out. This was a very, very nice um, studio build. And they put a lot of attention and detail into this one. So this has a control room, as you can see, with a beautiful window looking out into the giant live room. Now, this one, what's, what's crazy about this studio is this is a thousand square feet. So th the amount of space and height in this place that they found and took advantage of is, is incredible. Because not that a thousand square feet is small, it's not. A lot of places, depending on where you are, the sort of the zoning only allows to go up to a thousand square feet. Um, but if you saw, remember in Carriage Works, they had just under a thousand square feet and they had the two booths, all, all that stuff. But these guys really took advantage of the height because it was a fresh construction. You could, it was a lot more flexible. But yeah, look at this live room that they have, the booth in there, uh, we love it. the control room. So as far as gear in the studio, these guys are using some a nice collection of Universal Audio 610 Pre's, 710 Pre's. They have a 500 series rack full of APIs and Rupert Neve designs. And then they're going through the Lynx converters into Pro Tools Ultimate, I believe. And they have these uh, barefoot monitors, which Studio 601 also had. Just look at this control room. God, it's so nice. And back here, you can see the attention to detail that they did. I, I'm a big fan of just super clean feeling space, easy to route, to find things, to change things if you want, having it nice and clean. And a big part of that is the desk that they're using, which I now have a, also. It's the Danger Fox desk. Look at this thing. Woo! And I did a video on that as well, Epic Studio Gear on the Danger Fox desk, if you guys want to check that out. Super clean, super nice. Then they have the vocal booth in here, which you have line of sight out into the live room little coffee station in the window, line of sight into the control room. And then there's also a bathroom. So there's like a pass through from the booth uh, into this nice bathroom, which is what, definitely the nicest bathroom. One of the nicest bathrooms I've seen actually in uh, all of these studios that I've been to. And then here's the live room. This thing is absolutely incredible. Look at the height on those ceilings, the room, the space, absolutely beautiful. 
There's that space up above the control room that they took advantage of where you could actually climb up there. I actually climbed up there and took some took some shots from up there, but they have all these great amps, a beautiful old vintage piano, this nice drum kit. I think they have a couple kits in there. Just to wrap up, there's actually a booth. There's a vocal booth in the control room. There's actually a second double soundproofed, or I, I don't know what he called it. It's an extra insulated booth on the other side of the control room. And then there's a third booth in the live room. So there's three booths, this giant live room, beautiful control room, uh, sound lock between all of the rooms, bathroom, super duper nice. And it just looks fresh, super clean. Yeah, gray box. If you guys wanna watch the full video on any of these, they're all in that playlist that I will link up here. Check that out. All right, so that concludes the contestants for the detached category, which again was Carriage Work Studios, Studio 601, and Gray Box Nashville. All right, next, big shout out to my friend Jake Reed on this one. He is a good friend of mine who I have known for years and amazing drummer. He also has his own YouTube channel. Go check out his YouTube channel, Jake Reed. I don't know if it's Jake Reed Music or Jake Reed or whatever. Go check it out because he's just phenomenal. And I finally got him this year to really put up some great videos. So go check those out on his channel. But this is his studio, Jake Reed. Here we go. Woo. Yeah. Okay, so the main part of Jake's studio is this room in his basement. And it's just a, it's actually a really small room that he had remodeled by somebody that he told me. I don't know. I think I linked them in the description of that video. Check them out. They're great too. Um, but yeah, he's, he does session drumming and he started investing in his home studio a while back. So he has uh, amazing gear. Uh, the drums, especially he's as a drummer, he's got like, I don't know what he said, 12 or 13 kits, um, all incredible kits, great symbols, but he's also a great engineer. Like, and he doesn't call himself an engineer, but he really does a great job of capturing all of the right things in all the right ways so that the mixer can take those and really get everything and more than they need. It's awesome. So he's got the drum room, which is also the control room, uh, in the same spot. Uh, all of an amazing collection of microphones, an amazing collection of outboard pre's and gear, compressors, but the instruments is really, really what's special about his, uh, his actually, it's all, it's all special. This is a great video. Go watch this video, by the way, Jake reads. Uh, yeah, cause it's, yeah, I, I'm just going to have to just force my way through this. He's got incredible drums, this huge drum locker and a hallway, turned his hallway into a drum locker. Then he's got this side room which is essentially his wife's studio. His wife is an amazing keyboard player and pianist, and she does all, she's super talented. They both write like books up on music, which is, I mean, they're just super, I can't say enough about them. Go check them out. Kate Dutton, Jake Reed. This is uh, her room. They've got a grand piano in here, a bunch of vintage keyboards, a second rig, um, Mac mini in both rooms, uh, and then, if we go upstairs, let me see. Yep, upstairs. This is the living room of the house, but he had some XLR panels wired up into the living room. So they've done string horn sessions in the living room. He's done live tracking sessions uh, with multiple different instruments upstairs. They've got this grand piano all mic'd up. Uh, and then everything feeds back down into the basement where he can control and record everything into Pro Tools. He's got the Apollo uh, interfaces and then a, you know, the wonderful collection of APIs and Neves. And I think these are the AEA RPQ 2s. Um, just, just a solid collection of pre's and compressors and fun stuff. Mics, he's doing the mic drum mics through pedals thing. Super talented guy. Can't say enough. Go check out Jake Reed. Go check out this video. I, I'm so, I, this is one of my favorite videos that I've done. Love this one. Okay, so D Jake Reed is uh, contestant number one of the attached Epic Home Studios. Okay. All right, next is going to be the Josh Colby setup. 
Josh's studio was one of the first ones this year that I was like, people are going to like this one. This is a really good one. This is objectively a crazy studio, but it's all on the inside of his house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, love that one. Love that intro. So good. Uh, yeah, Josh works at the Vintage King here in Nashville, in Berry Hill. Super great guy. Such a great uh, engineer and mixer and player. And he's got a deep appreciation for the gear. He's very, very knowledgeable. Yeah, so he's running the the Apollo interface and the, uh, I think he's got a couple Apollos. A bunch of outboard pre's, the 710s, the... Oh, wow, you can see how shaky this was. This was before I had the gimbal. Um, he's got some Burl pre's, the Rupert Neve designs, and then this one. This? Okay, so the Vetus MA5. This was apparently one of his favorites that he has. Uh, the Rupert Neves, the Burls, he's got the 710, the Apollo X, and a handful of other things up in the desk, I believe, as well. Some more Rupert Neve stuff. A uh, bunch of compressors, he's got some 1176, so... The dude has incredible gear, an incredible setup. He's using Pro Tools on a Mac Mini. This is one of the older Mac Minis. It's got the UAD satellite over there. Uh, and then he's got this, turn this little spot here into a vocal booth, super creative. Um, Josh's whole setup is basically the upstairs of his house. So it's three rooms, it's spread out across three rooms just upstairs. So instead of using the house uh, as an upstairs for bedrooms, it's three it, it's three rooms for one studio. So this is the control room, and then he has this room, which is the like a tracking room or a drum room, separate. So all the lines run in through across the hall into this room, and he has his drum kit. He has all of his extra drums. There's some cabs in there if he's doing some reamping. Super sweet. Uh, very efficient and creative way to use the, what is already inside of his house. Uh, and then he's got, you know, great mics, uh, awesome selection of microphones, uh, headphones running in there. Uh, and then he has this lounge. This is sort of in between the control room and the live room, which is very smart. Nice sound lock, but it's also a comfy lounge. Shout out to uh, all the VHS collection over here. That's awesome. And then a classic, classic movie watching experience. This is one of my favorite lounges, I think, because it just feels like feels like home in there so yeah josh colby contestant number two on the attached category of the epic home studio setups all right and last and certainly not least of the attached epic home studio setups category is brilliant recordings oh let me turn the music down Same song. Fun, funny when I use the same song. Um, okay, so yeah. So this is Aaron. This is Aaron Brown in Dallas, Texas. And he actually builds custom homes. So he did this right. He it's, it's connected to the house, but it's kind of like its own wing. So you don't have to go through the house. It has its own dedicated entrance. It actually has its own dedicated parking, which is incredible. People can come in, park, go in. It's got a full kitchen lounge. There's a full bathroom with a shower. There's an editing suite. And then he's got the, and then this is the live room. It's, this is an unbelievable live room. Beautifully high vaulted ceilings. Um, this is also a thousand square feet, I believe. So he did all of this. There's the live room and then he's got an extra booth in the live room. Uh, and it just looks, it sounds great. It's one of my favorite sounding live rooms out of this series so far, Aaron did a tremendous job. You know, the guy's got experience building um, and he's got a great ear. So beautiful, beautiful live room, beautiful lounge. And this was all he built. I, can't, I think he built this like five or six years ago. Great collection of gear, great collection of mics. And yeah, also killer control room, super spacious, super comfortable to work in. Um, amazing, amazing collection of outboard gear. He's also using the Lynx Aurora converters, going into Pro Tools. He has so much outboard gear. We talked about outboard gear. 
forever on this video. It was so good. So watch that if you're super into that. Comfortable room, really nice aesthetic, and just being able to have the full bathroom with the shower, the kitchen, the lounge, that amazing live room, a booth, and a comfortable control room to have an entire band hang out with you in. Very, very nice. Great job, Aaron. Great job to everyone on these. All right, so for the attached category, we got Jake Reed, Josh Colby, Brilliant Recordings. And then for the detached category, we have Studio 601, Carriage Work Studios, and Gray Box Nashville. Minimal setup, we have Marcus Meston, Lake House Studios, and Brian Scholes. <laughs> Out of all of these videos, what I want to do is inspire you. Whatever you can come up with that works for your workflow, what you're trying to do, what you can afford at the time. But like having inspiration like this for me, I'm always trying to think ahead. Where do I want to be? Am I getting the stuff that I want to have? Am I, is there a better way to have this arranged? Is there something I'm not thinking of? And you guys who have these incredible setups, thank you for being so creative and, and clever with how you set up your, your studios. It's a big inspiration to me. I know it's a big inspiration to, to, the people at home who watch these videos because they tell me in the comments every single time. So let me know what your top three favorites of these three categories are down in the comments. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So I've got one more video coming up this year. It is gonna be on Thursday. It's gonna be the Epic Studio Gear video. It's gonna be really cool. I will be announcing the winner for the previous one and there's also going to be another giveaway on this video. So check those out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.